Welcome. Today's project is this little table that a client brought to me. It was in her husband's family and she wanted to keep it, but it didn't fit in her home's aesthetic. So she wanted to go for a Serena and Lily coastal look. So it's in really great shape. It has beautiful lines. So what she did is she sent me this picture of the inspiration and she worked with a local designer to pick out the paint color. So they've chosen Sleepy Hollow by Sherwin Williams. So I'm going to start by scuff sanding the whole thing out. It does have some gouges on the top and some scratches. So I'm going to use all these contouring pads and I'm going to use my sander and I'm just going to really try to get all of that shine off. So when you're painting out a piece, you don't have to go down to raw, but I do need to knock off some of that shine so that I have better adhesion with my primer and my paint. I love these little contour pads because they just help get into all the little profiles. I do have them linked down in the comments, but they're really affordable and they just really help for all these little detail areas. I'm going to use Bondo to fill in all the little dents and gouges. Now Bondo is a two-part system. You have the putty and then you have a hardener. So I like to kind of put it in little batches, but I don't put the hardener in both batches right away because you only have a few minutes for it to work before it starts getting gummy on you. So you just kind of want to do little batches at a time. So you can see I'm going to go ahead and put the hardener in on one of them, but then I'll just put the hardener over to the side on the other and I'll mix that up later. So I don't want to mix up too big of a batch at a time. Or like I said before, it just gets all gummy and it dries up too quickly. You can use a putty knife. I'm using a five in one painter's tool and I'm just taking the Bondo and I'm kind of feeling around. I've, I've done a really good sand on it. So I've sanded out some of the dents, some of the minor scratches. So I'm just using my fingers from trying to see, okay, what still needs to be filled in. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the hardware holes because we are going to change out the hardware as well. Once everything is dry, I'm going to go ahead and sand it back smooth. Now I'm ready to prime. For this project, I'm using Ben Shellac Primer. It's kind of my go-to primer. Um, it pretty much provides fantastic adhesion for almost any paint applications. There's a lot of really good primers on the market. This one just happens to be my favorite.
Because there were so many detail pieces, I do sometimes like to go through with liquid sandpaper on some of the um, grooves and those crevices just to make sure that I have gotten all of those areas because sometimes it's hard with your sandpaper to get into some of those detailed areas. So liquid sandpaper is just kind of like my extra insurance to make sure that I'm etching up the surface for, again, really good adhesion. This is a solvent-based primer. It has to be cleaned up with either ammonia or denatured alcohol. So because of that, I like to use disposable things to adhere it. So you can see I put the primer on a paper plate that I'll end up just throwing away, or I use a roller that maybe I've used before on a couple other projects. Um, it's not quite ready to throw away yet, so I can use it one more time on some primer. The paint I'm using today is Sherwin-Williams Emerald Line, their urethane trim enamel. And again, the color is Sleepy Hollow. It's a beautiful, soft blue with a kind of a gray undertone. So it, it kind of skews a little bit cool, but it's a lovely blue. Kind of goes into that coastal vibe. I like to line my trays with either a plastic bag or some type of a press and seal, something that can make it um, easy to clean up at the end. I pour my paint in and then sometimes I will go ahead, you'll see I'm gonna mist it with a little bit of water just to kind of help it go on a little bit smoother. I'm gonna start with all the detailed areas first. I like to use a paintbrush. This is Zebra's Round Brush, and they have a, a whole line of application-specific paintbrushes that you can use. And this one's really great to get into kind of rounded areas. For the top, I'm going to use the Sherwin-Williams Contractor brand. It's their microfiber four inch roller, and I believe it's the three eighths inch um, nap. So when you have a really fine nap, it helps you get a really smooth surface. I like to work the perimeter first, and then I'll fill in the middle. And at the end, I will just come back over the entire surface with nice, long, smooth strokes, just making sure everything is even.
So now I'm ready to drill my new hardware holes. I got all of my stuff out and I marked all my holes. I was going for the middle, <laughs> which would have been fine if I was um, using a knob, but I'm using ring pulls. So in the end, I ended up um, drilling it in the wrong spot. So I'm going to explain in the next section what happened and what the remedy was that I ended up having to do. I ended up working some this weekend, but on hindsight, I should not have because I ended up messing up the hardware. Ah! I'll show you what I did. I'm drilling holes for ring pulls, not knobs, but I centered it in the middle, drilled my holes, but when I attached it, they're way down here. <laughs> and that's the center, but it's just too low. And so because the ring pull needs to be centered, you know, this part needs to be centered and just higher so it just looks visually pleasing so i've had to you can see where i had to fill all the holes in now i'm priming and repainting everything oh well it's better to catch it at least it's a painted piece so it's gonna look pretty once i get it done so mistakes happen so for a final touch, we decided to add a little bit of gold wax. Um, I think this ended up not being the exact color she wanted. So I did end up changing it out and I did rub and buff with uh, gold leaf. But this is how I apply it. Usually just use a little artist brush. We could have done more gold, but she wanted to go with a nice subtle look. So I like to apply it. And you see, I come back with my finger and I just kind of rub it out. I'm not going for perfection. I'm going for a nice subtle look. So let's look back at the before. As you can see in the light, we had a lot of little gouges and scratches and dings that we needed to fix. But my client wanted more of a coastal vibe, more of a Serena and Lily dupe. So I think after a little bit of paint, we made it. What do you think? I think it turned out really good. I love her choice with the Sleepy Hollow and I love that gold accent just around the top. We could have done more, but I think it's subtle and I think it's just the right amount. She ended up going with the ring pulls for the hardware. Um, we had some other options, but I do think that the ring pulls kind of exemplify the Serena and Lily look, and I think it was perfect. She pared it down to just five pieces of hardware. Again, I think that was the right choice as well. So I think it turned out really good. Tell me what you think. <laughs>